Hey everybody, it's me, Undead Viking. I'm here to tell you about a cool game I've been playing a lot of. It's called Hoarders. Now, Hoarders, as you can probably guess, is a fantasy-based game of dwarves uh, fighting a big giant cave troll. Uh, the cave troll stole some treasure from the dwarves, and the dwarves want it back. They're going right into the cave troll's, uh, well, cave, and they're going to try to track down their sacred relic and escape with their lives and the treasure. Uh, note, None, not all dwarves will survive uh, this adventure, or, um, well, technically, in some cases, none of them will, will survive the adventure. Um, the game is very tactical-based. There's some card play as well, but this is definitely a game uh, of, uh, you know, there's some strategy, but this is a tactics game. You know, uh, as I'm going to show you how to play, um, there's certain, uh, like, you have a certain number of action points that you get to move uh, your 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 figures about the board, both um, the troll, and the, the troll is cool uh, because of the fact that you don't actually have a giant troll figure, and I know some of you might be disappointed, but this is actually kind of cool. You have these two giant troll feet, because the troll is huge, and so you just move these feet around, and you try to squash the dwarves at the feet. It's actually pretty fun, actually. And of course, you have a big giant club that the dwarf uses uh, to smash the uh, the hapless dwarves as well. So, um, it's a two-player game, obviously. I mean, theoretically, you could probably play it with more people, like some people will take half the dwarves and another half the dwarves or something like that. Something like that. You can play a three-player game, but I've, I've only played this a two-player game, but I've played it a lot and I've been having a heck of a lot of fun with it. So, um, let me uh, show you how to play the game, and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you more about uh, orders. Alright, cool. Let's do this. This is the game Hoarders, where one player is going to be playing the troll who has stolen the dwarven relic, and one player is going to play the small band of dwarves that have decided to attack the troll in his cave in the attempt to obtain their relic and bring it home for glory. Now, there are a few things you're going to do uh, when you set up the game, and one of the first things you're going to do is each player has a deck of cards. There are a deck of dwarf cards, and there is a deck of troll cards. And what you do here is you shuffle these up, and then the dwarf player uh, draws five of these cards, and there's obviously more than five cards. There's eight, actually, eight dwarf cards, and the same thing happens with the troll. The, the, the dwarf player will sh shuffle these up, and the, dwarf, the troll player will draw five of these cards. The rest of the cards won't be used in this particular game, and... Uh, as you play the game more and more, you will learn the type of cards that you have, and then you'll kind of have an idea, maybe, of the strategies that the other player is going to use, and so on and so forth. Um, so, like, you know, here's, like, a boulder toss allows you to throw a boulder and kill a dwarf automatically. Um, spear breaker, uh, like some sort of a mystical power, uh, surrounds the dwarf and destroys their, their spear they're using, or their lance. Um, healing skin, uh, so you can heal yourself two points instead of the on top of the normal one point regeneration troll staff. So different powers like that, pretty pretty standard. Um, dwarf abilities, uh, some of them are like different equipment, um, like you can have one of your dwarven warriors can have Fang, the uh, the dwarven war axe, so it does more damage, or, or the black lance, you know, so the better weapon. Um, some of them, uh, like, like charge, uh, I'll have plus one action point so they can move faster, dwarven speed, things like that, that'll allow you to um, just different ways to break the rules. And so each person will get a deck of five cards uh, that they'll use. And then as you can see here, I'm just gonna show you these really quick. Uh, the troll player will have this troll character sheet in front of you. Um, they have a health bar where, like, after you, you start taking damage, you just move your health bar down. Obviously, if you get down to zero, you're dead. The troll does regenerate, so as long as they're still alive, they will get a hit point back each time. When a troll takes damage, um, they have a defense of four, so a successful attack on a one die is four or higher. They also roll, the dwarf will roll an extra roll and to see where they hit. On a one, uh, you're blinded by a headshot. Troll is unable to use his hammer next turn. The hammer is their weapon, obviously. and um, uh, But that goes away. As well as a six, the gut shot, um, plus one action point for the troll's next turn. And so you, you, you will put one of these little uh, damage markers on the spot when they take that damage. Um, the other ones, the two, three, four, and five, where like right arm, um, you know, it's like now wound the left arm, the troll can't use its hammer. And so if you can get wounds on both of their arms, uh, both both arms there, you, you he can't use the hammer anymore. Um, and then the four and the five, he, they lose an action point. Uh, so you they, they go ahead and just like, they're gonna move slower if you can hurt the feet. 
Uh, dwarves don't have hit points. As soon as they get hit, they are just dead. Um, but uh, the um, Dwarven Lancers are easier to hit. Three or above to hit them, so that's, that's the, uh, the, the troll trying to hit them. So three or above will hit them and kill them. Dwarven Warrior, four or above. Uh, Dwarven Warriors are faster than Dwarven Lancers, but um, Dwarven Lancers can lose their spear, and when they do, they actually do uh, move up in speed, but obviously they do less damage down there. Uh, so, uh, the game is played relatively simply. The other thing, well, I should say, one other thing you have to do when you set up the game is that there are these three uh, tokens used for the Dwarven uh, treasure, or the Troll's treasure, but the, the Dwarven Relic will be in one. So there's two normal ones, like so, and then there's this one, which has the Dwarven Relic on it, as you can see. And so the Troll player has to pick, there's these three spots here, these four spots here, and these three spots here. And they have to pick one of those to put the, the treasure down. They have to put these three tokens. So, And they have to put one on each one. So, you know, you could be gutsy and say, oh yeah, there, and then like kind of try to bait the player and think, oh, there's no way he'd put the treasure there. But, you know, more likely you're going to try to put it someplace off in a corner like that, and then, you know, place them like so. And so the whole thing is, is that the play the dwarves are trying to race in, grab the treasure, and get out. That's, that's, and they win the game if they do that. If they can kill the troll, great. Um, you know, and, but more often than not, it seems to be that, like, um, when I've played the dwarves, when they've won, it's because they've escaped out the door, uh, with the treasure. So, the game is, uh, very easy. Uh, basically on the dwarf player's turn, what they'll do is they will move all of their dwarves, uh, you know, one at a time. And, um... We we have like uh, we, I've used tokens like uh, to show that I've 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 moved them and you know one of those things uh, so uh, but in this case I'm just going to show you so basically the the dwarven warriors um, have five action points so they can move and it's just like any other game you know one two three four five or whatever however you want to move dwarves can move through and I should mention that some of these uh, sadly when these these dwarves uh, got sent to me like this poor guy he got his arm uh, it fell off in, in transit so that's unfortunate but like and you don't have to move your full action point so one two three four and you can go there and but you know these guys obviously they're holding onto that so it's like one two three four you know one two three four five let's see one two three four five yep that's exactly what I wanted so you can just move these up. Dwarves can't ever stack up. They can't be more than one dwarf in one spot, but you can put, um, dwarves can move through other dwarves. So uh, they can, uh, you can, you, you can't block a spot with a dwarf. Now, troll movement is slightly different. Um, when a troll moves, uh, they move, obviously you don't see a big figure of a troll. I, it's kind of neat, actually. Trolls are just going to move their, their feet. And when they move their feet, they have to actually keep their feet. They can move them however they want, but at the end, like, their feet have to be within one space of each other. You couldn't end up like this. See, if you notice, like, there's two spaces. I'll move the club out of the way. They couldn't end up like this. So when you move the troll, you have to make sure that you can't ever do an illegal movement. Also, since you get to pivot the, the feet, so you can kind of go, you can go, like, one... And then you can, and a really good way, the actual the rules state, a real good way to, to do it correctly is just to kind of pick up the feet and then move them by the heel. Because you're moving the heel. Don't worry about the front because you're going to be able to pivot the feet around like this. Now you might be wondering, why does it matter if I pivot the feet? Well, if you can somehow land on a, tro on a dwarf with your foot, you kill them. You just crush them underneath your foot. And so that's actually one of the ways that you're really going to be doing a lot of your damage. Now a couple of quick things. Um... The, the treasure mounds, the troll can't move through those. They, they, they can't even step over them. But dwarves can move right through them. So dwarves are going to use those to their advantage um, because of the fact that they can't be, you can't get stepped on in there. But of course, then if you have your club, you can smash them, obviously. But so, you know, when you move the troll, you're just going to be moving it like so. And then you could pivot, like I said, you can pivot your, your feet. But just like a real person, you can't like pivot your feet back like this. You, you can't ever have like a 180 degree. It's always got to be something like that at least. And so the troll will move like, like so. And like when they get done with their movement, whoops, when they get to their movement, you have to make sure that the, the, the two heels aren't more than one hex apart. That, that's, otherwise then uh, the movement is illegal. The troll gets six action uh, points each turn. And so one move, like from here to here, 
that's one move. If you want to pivot the, the foot, like from here to here, that's another action point. So you have to keep that in mind. So each move of the heel, like so, is a point, and then each thing like that is a point. And so you, it's it's very important as the troll that um, you, you kind of like declare each move uh, as, as itself. And also it's, you know, you need to plot it out pretty well too. And um, until you come really familiar with the game, what we did is like we kind of let the troll player kind of mark the spots where they had the heel before. It's like, okay, my, my, my feet started here and here. And so then they kind of plot their move to try to see if they could get to where they wanted to. And that way they could always remember uh, where they were on those locations. But, you know, but once you play the game a couple of times and you get used to being the troll, it's actually pretty intuitive and it gets, it's pretty simple. But enough about like moving the troll and move, but even though moving the troll is a lot of fun, <laughs> especially if you can squash a dwarf. So what about combat? So, cause obviously this game is a lot about, you know, fighting the troll. So like, let's say the troll has ended up right there and you have, uh, uh, the dwarves that are going to race forward and attack and while other dwarves are going to race over here and try to correct, collect treasure or what have you. But the most important part of the, about this game is the different things that you're going to do in combat. Now a dwarf warrior can run up and they can hit and attack a dwarf. Uh, you have to be next to a foot somewhere. Now, you, just like you can imagine, you can run through like so. And what's important is that if you can actually get behind the troll back here, um, you can actually get out of the way of him being able uh, to uh, hit you with his hammer. However, he can back up. So, you know, be, be sure that um, you, 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 do, uh, you are aware that you, you can get killed that way. But, the really cool thing, if um, you can kind of hit and move, so you could go like this: one, two, attack, attack the uh, uh, the foot, and then if you still have movement, you can go like one, two, like that. So you can keep moving after uh, you do your attack. Uh, there is no like once you attack, you stop moving. Pretty simple, like I, I explained before. Like a dwarven warrior, you're gonna roll one die uh, to see if you hit. You gotta roll four or better to hit, a, hit hit the troll. So you roll. I got a five, awesome. I hit the troll. I hit the troll with the uh, uh, with as, as a dwarven warrior, so his axe does two damage. So you're gonna go one, two, like that. So you mark that down, and then you roll another die to see what you damaged. In this case, three. So we're gonna go ahead and find his arm, like so. And now, if we can just get his other arm, we're gonna take his hammer away from him. Dwarven Warriors are pretty straightforward. They're your quick guys, and they do more damage, and they're kind of like your blitzers. And they're the ones that you're going to be fighting with the troll, um, like, for a little bit. But for the most part, you're going to want them, since they're faster, collecting treasure and trying to find the treasure. At least that's my strategy always been. I'm much better as a troll than I am as a dwarf when I play this game. But um, the dwarf lancers actually have uh, a different ability. Um, they can just run forward and they can try to stab at a troll. Yeah, you know, and just like normal, just do an attack. But they can also, if they want, do what's called a lance the foot attack. And so they roll the die again. Trying to, I got lucky, so six. I so I hit, and what you do then is this is really cool. Uh, you take the spear or the lance out of their. Uh, out of their hand and you stick it in the foot like that. Now, you've actually stuck the troll's foot straight into the ground and he can't move that foot. So now all of a sudden you have a troll that's pinned down. Now here's the cool thing. It isn't permanent, however. The troll on his turn can roll one die to see if he can break free of that particular attack. And he only can do it on a, on a six. So you roll, you got a three, he's not gonna be able to break his foot free. However, on the next troll turn, because of his anger and because of his strength, he just gets to rip it free at that point. But, like I said, it's only a one in six shot and the, dwarf, the troll's gotta be lucky to break free in that situation. Now the troll, as I said, if he can move, he can just stomp on a, on a, on a dwarf and kill him. Bam, he's done. Uh, and you, you take him out. If a, if a troll steps on a lancer, that still has their spear because they have a they have a spiky spear that they put they shove into the foot. They he takes two damage when he does that, but he still kills the dwarf in that situation. So it's one of those situations where if you're low on health as as the troll, you might want to kill the dwarf. But oh my gosh, I don't I don't know if I want to you know do that or whatever you know because of the fact that you're gonna knock a bunch of, you're gonna knock, take two points of damage uh, just to kill the dwarf to do that. So it's, it's definitely one of those uh, things that you, you, you want to do, but it's kind of 
uh, costly, if you will. Now, uh, if you want to try to hit somebody with your hammer, you have to, there's actually like, I'm, I'll show you the, the, the design here. Picture each foot, that's where the, you can hit with the hammer, and this is the blind spot. So, the, and if you can hit one, so like, you know, there's, looks like a dwarf is right there, you're going to compare that, you know, is it, you know, he's going to be out of range because of the fact that he's not, he's three spots away, like one, two, three, like so. You know, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. He's not within my range. Now, if he was there, I could hit him with the hammer. And then I got to hit the defense of four better. So let's see if I get lucky here. I've got some pretty lucky rolls this time. So another five. I'm, I'm not on fire. So, bam, you hit him with the hammer. And one hit will kill a dwarf, like so. So if the troll can manage to kill all the dwarves, that's how he wins. If the dwarf manages to steal the treasure or kill the troll... That's how they win. The game doesn't take a long time to play, but it's got a lot of tactical choices. And, you know, one of the things I found when I play the troll is that I've always tried to, like, get the troll it towards the entrance. Because you got to block that entrance. If you play back here as the troll, uh, you're going to lose. Because eventually the dwarf player is going to play a couple of cards. They're going to let him, uh, you know, speed a dwarf up. And they're going to snag. As soon as they find that relic, they're going to book it and head out the door. And it's really fun to do this is like you play it, um, you play as a troll the first game against your opponent, and then you switch sides and you play it again. And that's like the most fun that I've had uh, playing this. And I make sure that when we do that, we play with the same hand of cards. Just so we can actually say, well, you know, well, I guess technically if, if like the other player, you know, wins both times, you say, well, you got better cards that time. You know, so play with the exact same deck of cards and uh, compare. But... Um, the game's a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, it's one of those games that you can kind of see the action both on the board and in your head as you play. Uh, so I've had a lot of fun with it, but let me tell you more about it uh, in my conclusion. All right, thanks very much for watching how to play uh, the game of Hoarders. And, uh, you know, I, I talked to the designer a couple of times just we were talking about the game. Uh, I had a couple of phone conversations with Greg. And... Um, one of the things I asked him about, and I said, you must have been a really big fan of the uh, Lord of the Rings movies. And and he actually said, he said that actually had nothing to do with the design. And he said there was actually, this, this idea for this game uh, was in his head. Obviously, he's got, you know, some fantasy uh, leanings, you know, as far as his, like, past gameplay. But he actually, like, had ideas for this game or, like, this game was in development before the Lord of the Rings movies and that big, um, like, cave troll battle scene, of course, in, in the... Uh, uh, the Fellowship of the Ring. So, I mean, I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, I, I just assumed it was like somebody, I mean, because I was inspired by that little, I remember having uh, d d adventures and stuff based on that idea. So, I mean, I was pretty cool. But regardless, you know, I, I, I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to like think the same thing I did and I just wanted to set your record straight and so then maybe I'm not the only person who's uh, like thinks that. <laughs> so, anyway, regardless, um, you know, the game, as I said, is, is in the introduction and while you're showing uh, how to play the game, um, um, it's it's a total tactical game, and I enjoy uh, tactical games. I'm not. A, I, I used to be a big miniatures war gamer. Um, I used to play it a lot. I used to paint a lot of miniatures, and I used to um, play a lot of those games. Um, I was never a big 40k fan. I was actually a Warhammer Fantasy fan, so I was like definitely on the, the the lower spectrum as far as that goes. And I played a lot of Blood Bowl as well, you know. And and those games like and there's a, there's a distinction between tactics and strategy that 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 isn't. Um, uh, you need to kind of design it. I mean, tactical is and this. It's what I look at as being tactical. I mean, I don't want to get a discussion about what, what each one is to each. But this is just tactics. Figuring out where you can move, how far you can move, what I can use this card for, that sort of thing. Trying to put together a tactical situation that where your advantages uh, can shine. And, you know, there's a lot of times when you play this game, especially with the dwarves, where you're going to be sacrificing your dwarves um, for the greater good, if you will, you know, basically to win the game. Uh, as you probably, if you are a tactical war gamer, you, you know fully fully well what I'm talking about. You can't go into it as the dwarf player thinking uh, that you are going to be 
you know, get everybody allowed alive. You're going to be sacrificing uh, certain dwarves. You're gonna, you're especially lancers. You're you're gonna send them up to try to jab the foot down, and and stick it. Uh, and you're gonna give up on them because they're probably not gonna survive that attack. And and so it becomes a real big challenge actually for both players. Really, the troll uh, making sure no dwarves get behind him because that's like the worst thing that can possibly happen. And also the dwarves trying to get behind the troll because that's where you need to be so you don't get squished. So this game has a lot of that going on, and you know, basically trying to put yourself in the best possible position. And you know, the game itself would have been a lot of fun regardless. But with the actual added cards and the fact that you can break the rules, from it, of course, then it expands on that. And now you have some clever card play that you get to add to the, the already you know fairly sterling uh, you know miniatures war game that that you have on a, on a very skirmish level. Um, to be, make it really interesting. You know, one of the cool things I, I, I felt as I as I played the game, and every and I, I as I said, I much more enjoyed being the troll uh, than the dwarves, just because I like the whole idea of squishing these. Is that whenever I move these feet around and like the whole pivoting and everything like that, I it reminded me of playing Car Wars of all the weird things. Every you know, whenever I would play uh, Car Wars, which I you know game I love, you know, you'd hold down the one corner of your of your counter and then you'd like pivot the car for your turns and things like that. And so you know, I, I for whatever reason, every time I played that, I always thought of of, of that game. You know, for better or worse, actually, but covers is awesome, and, and this game is a heck of a lot of fun. Now, I mean, as far as who this game is going to appeal to, if you like dice, if you like a fantasy, uh, like skirmish uh, fighting game, um, I, I definitely would suggest it. Um, this is on a very small scale, a lot like games like um, you know Descent or um, uh, I'm trying to think like Arcadia Quest, things like that. Uh, you know, you're you're basically putting your miniatures uh, in, in a position for their abilities to shine and, and to work, and then you have some dice play, and then you're going to, then the dice kind of determine certain actions. Obviously, you can put yourself in the best possible position. If you don't roll, <laughs> roll dice well enough, you're not going to do very well. But that there's that whole mitigating the luck factor where you have to kind of just put yourself uh, in the best possible spot and where the dice roll show up where they may. Now, if you're a person who doesn't appreciate the chaos of the dice brings, obviously this probably isn't going to be a game you're going to enjoy, but I'm guessing that the people I'm speaking to uh, that are interested in this game are well aware of, you know, the fact that um, you, it isn't deterministic. They don't want a deterministic game. They want to have a game uh, of chance, of, of randomness, of chaos, and, and this is exactly where it is. So if you uh, were ever inspired by that uh, cave troll battle uh, in the... Um, in, in, in the Fellowship of the Ring movie, uh, if you uh, enjoy uh, a fantasy theme and if you like a quick little two-player 30-minute skirmish, I really strongly uh, suggest you check out Hoarders and maybe pick that uh, and back it and pick up a copy for yourself. Uh, I know I will because I've been having a heck of a lot of fun with it and uh, I'm really looking forward uh, to what the final game is going to look like. So, if you have any questions about Hoarders in any way, shape, or form, please post those. I'll try to answer those to the best of my my ability. As always, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I know I say that all the time, but really, I really do. I appreciate each and every one of you out there. So uh, until then, uh, until the next video comes out, you watch that one. I hope you and everyone you know and care about has one heck of an awesome day. All right. Bye-bye now.